All right, the CEO of International Paper, the world's largest maker of office paper and cardboard shipping boxes, is bullish on the global economy. Speaking today at an investor meeting here in New York, John Faraci says we'll see stabilization by the end of the year. International Paper has had to idle a fifth of its global production capacity because of weak demand. He joins us now in the office, which is a pleasure. Usually we do this via satellite, so thanks for coming in. Uh, let me talk first of all about uh, uh, what we teased you with here, saying that your top priority is generating strong free cash flow is what you told your investors uh, today how do you plan on doing that and I mean it doesn't look so bad in the first place 2.1 billion dollars uh, in, in the first quarter well first of all we had record cash flow in 2008 a record in our 110 year history and we've continued to operate very well through the first quarter taking out a lot of costs you know we've had unprecedented weakness in in our markets and in some cases 30 percent of our capacity is down but we've really done it by taking out costs cutting back on capex and managing our working capital Let's talk about cost for a second because everybody's talking about commodities rally. What do your raw materials costs look like and, and what do you expect them to look like going forward? Well, if you look over the last couple of years, our input costs, the commodities, uh, energy, uh, transportation, wood, chemicals have gone up $2 billion. In the first uh, five months of this year, first four months annualized, they've come back down $900 million. So we're still sitting on a lot of input cost inflation that we've seen over the last uh, couple of years. I don't think all that's going away. And we're not planning for it all to go away. Basically, uh, we've got to take costs out in other parts of the company. But I, I think we will get some more input cost uh, relief. How hard is it to pass on that, those costs? Because obviously yeah. the situation hasn't been pretty for uh, retail consumers or for business yeah. consumers alike. In our business, our business isn't a cost push business. You know, we can't pass through costs if supply and demand aren't in balance. So basically, we've got to find ways to offset those costs and manage our capacity so that we manage our inventories well. And how have you been doing that? You're closing down production. Do you expect well, to continue winding that down? We've taken a lot of downtime. What we call when we we don't permanently close production, we call it lack of water downtime. We've had 30 percent of our capacity on the sidelines uh, for the last six months, and if we think that's going to be structural, uh, then we'll be adjusting our footprint and, and you know having fewer facilities. Uh, it's too soon to make that call in let's say our container board business, where you know we haven't seen the economy start to improve yet. It will. And when it does, we'll have a better gauge of how much capacity we need. Uh, let's talk about demand before we get onto the container board business. Uh, in general, where do you see demand as far as this economy? We've had a lot of, even the yeah. bears, Paul Krugman's come out and said, look, it's going to be over sometime at the end of this summer. Do you expect a turnaround then? And uh, I'm not smart enough. We're not smart enough to call when it's going to be over. Uh, what we do know uh, is at some point it will be over. We've had 13 recessions since 1930. This is the 13th. 12 of them have ended. And what I'd say is the last, Matt, the last couple of months, our demand's been going sideways. You know, it's down, you know, 10 to 15 percent year over year. Uh, so it's, it stopped getting worse. And there are some signs. Uh, consumer confidence is, is back up. Retail spending is up a bit. Uh, inventories are getting worked off. Uh, the savings rate's up, so the deleveraging that's got to occur is going on. So there's some, there's some positive signs now, but we haven't seen any meaningful pickup. What, in what does the inventories picture mean to you? I mean, we've, I've heard from a, a bunch of guys who look mainly at, at tech, uh, tech companies that inventories have been worked down so far that at some point they really have to snap back up and that it won't be a gradual rise, mm -hmm. it won't be, but it's going to be really a V-shaped jump because of the incredible drop that we've seen. Yeah, I, I've heard that, and again, uh, you know, I'm, we're not economists uh, to draw the shape of the recovery there will be one and whether it's v-shaped or u-shaped or some other shape uh, the inventories in our industry are very very important because they're an indicator of supply and demand balance and if there's excess supply prices fall and margins shrink and that's not good for generating cash I have to say that we probably care about your opinion if not more than <laughs> at least as much as an yeah. economist's opinion uh, let me let's let's talk about that uh, the acquisition uh, of the uh, industrial packaging business from a warehouser last August. Uh, Six billion dollar acquisition. You've repaid a bunch of the debt uh, and you're reducing your total debt to about 11 billion dollars. How much more do you expect to repay in the next year and is, is that a key for you here? It is a key for us. We said when we bought warehouser we'd pay off a billion and a half to two billion over the first 24 months. We've already paid back a billion eight so we're, we're paying back more faster and we're going to continue to reduce our debt. That, that's our priority right now until we get stability in the economy uh, and see our cash flow improve, which it will when the economy comes back. But right now, debt reduction is a priority. Is refinancing tough right now because you had a serious co coupon on your last issue? You know, credit markets are still, I'd say, very volatile. They certainly improved from where they were at the end of the year when they were shut for investment-grade companies like International Paper. 
Uh, we refinanced about a billion dollars uh, several months ago, or uh, I guess it's now over a month ago. It was at a relatively high rate, but taking that near-term risk of maturities off the table was important, so we're glad we did it. Let's just talk, I want to touch quickly on the so-called black liquor alternative mm -hmm. fuel tax credit. We did a great story on this. Uh, you've spoken out in the past as a believer in free enterprise, less government is better. That sounds very American. Uh, but you've also defended the payment of the tax credits uh, to operators of, of U.S. pulp mills. Why? Sure. Well, the, there's legislation that was passed, uh, and that legislation uh, permits us as a user of alternative fuels to qualify for the tax credit. So we didn't lobby for the legislation. Uh, we weren't there trying to uh, design it. But it does exist. The IRS has certified the industry and in international paper qualifying for the tax credits so that they're there. Uh, we're applying for them. Very silly tax credit system, though, isn't it? I think the free market in general is uh, the way we got to go. <laughs> All right. Hey, John, I appreciate you, having, uh, you coming on here. Uh, we are out of time. John Farashi, their CEO of International Thanks.